All right, AP Art and Design, this um, screencast is going to focus on grading for this class. Um, it is uh, something that you need to learn how to use to your advantage, um, that this is actually a tool to help you improve and guide you towards success for um, AP requirements. It's not just something you receive. I really um, need you to you know, look at grading differently this year, and I wanna help you understand that this will be a driving force um, to guide you from project to project. So we're only going to talk about grading for that sustained investigation. Remember that you have kind of two chapters to your portfolio. You have that quality section, and then you have your sustained investigation. They are graded separately um, when AP grades your portfolio, and then those two grades are combined to give you your composite score. And your composite score um, is the score that you'll receive in the summertime. And that's the score that colleges and universities use. But we're only gonna focus on sustained investigation. That's the artwork that I'm grading this year in class with me because that's the artwork you have to produce this year in class with me. The other, um, the other portfolio section of quality, remember that could be artwork that you created two years ago. And it's you know still very high caliber and quality and so you may incorporate it into your quality section. Um, so with that being said, it's, um, it's not really worth focusing on you know, grading for that area. So it's just gonna be about sustained investigation. I'm going to explain to you how AP grades that's what we need to understand. This is not Miss Michaels' grading scale. This is not about what Miss Michaels thinks about your artwork or her assignments. This is College Board. College Board has trained me to teach you how they look at artwork and grade artwork and what their expectations are. So we're gonna we're gonna learn about how um, College Board looks at your sustained investigation, how do they grade it, how do they break it down, and then you will understand how I grade your art pieces in this class because, because they're totally parallel, they're completely in alignment. I do not have my own private grading system. I use College Board. So I, I want to just review a little bit, refresh your memory, not take a lot of time on this part, but reminding you what sustained investigation is. Um, College Board requires me to make sure that you understand you know, what you're doing and what the point is. So this page is directly from um, College Board literature, um, but specifically it just explains that your motivation during your sustained investigation is to present works of art that show an in-depth investigation of materials, processes, ideas, and concepts, and that you are developing your ideas and your techniques over a period of time. And for us, that's the school year, okay? It is important that you're able to show College Board that you are driven by questions, that one piece of artwork um, brings up new questions and, and then you know, allows for the next piece of artwork and that, you know, you're kind of able to display your journey. Um, your journey consists of two things. It consists of the artwork itself. So that's kind of the, the uh, visual representation of your journey, but it does also consist of some written. The written part are these uh, reflection questions that we answer. Um, they explain kind of our thoughts and our, our um, guidelines and our processes. And then there's also a written section in the portfolio that um, is kind of your artist statement. Um, that's something we don't need to worry about at this time, but in the spring, we'll start talking more about that. 
Um, so there's two parts to this portfolio that are looked at by College Board, the artwork itself and the written part of it. Um, this is the basic breakdown of your sustained investigation. Remember, you have 15 image slots, okay? Within that 15 image slots, you are going to have some, you know, finished and completed artwork, and that should be the bulk of your 15 images. There is also room for some of your images to be progress photos, so photos that show your, shows your artwork in development phases. Um, some of those images could be your planning stage. So we've talked about how important sketchbook entries are and that they're thoughtful and that they're well executed because that could also be uh, a couple of images. And it could also be um, documentation of revision. So there are times when we produce a piece of artwork um, and we you know feel like it's it's okay it's not the greatest um, and you just kind of let it be and then maybe two months later you go back to that artwork because you have a, a fresh idea or a way to change it or revise it um, and those types of images can also be included in your 15 slots um, and this is all something that we will decide together when the time is right. Until that time, it is all about producing as much artwork as you can and documenting it. The writing part of your sustained investigation, like I said, um, you're given prompts. You don't just have to kind of think of what to say by yourself. Um, you have already experienced your first reflection questions. Those won't change. Now, your answers will change. Um, you're supposed to be, you know, able to show how, um, you know, your focus has developed, your focus has changed, what kinds of new questions were stimulated from creating these works of art, what kind of new ideas have been generated. Um, so your answers will change, but the questions will not. Um, so you're going to become more and more comfortable with, with these prompts throughout the year since we'll be doing them and practicing them every month. Um, you're also going to have to be able to um, kind of identify your artwork. So you need to be able to title it. You need to talk about the materials that you use, the processes that were used in that work of art, and then of course give dimensions of size, um, height, width, and depth if you're doing 3D. So this is taken directly from um, a College Board manual, one of the manuals that I use, and it breaks down um, the scoring criteria for your sustained investigation into four categories. So this is how your grade for, just for your sustained investigation um, chapter is graded. Um, the first category um, is about how well you formulate and identify in writing those guiding questions that um, that are the driving force for your sustained, sustained investigation. So those are kind of your what if questions, the things that you ponder, okay? And if you notice here, that is worth 20% of your score for this chapter. The second criteria is how well you demonstrate written and visual evidence of practice experimentation and revision guided by questions in your sustained investigation. So the second part of this criteria is how well um, does the evidence you provide, so evidence would be your writing as well as your artwork, how well does it show your ideas in criteria number one, okay? And that is worth 30% of your score. The third criteria is the actual making of artwork. 
um, making works of art and design that demonstrate your understanding of materials and processes and ideas. So this is a little bit about the quality of artwork and the methods and techniques that you're using. That's also worth 30%. And then the last criteria is, um, you know, are you making works of art and design that demonstrate 2D, 3D, or drawing skills? So whatever portfolio you're doing, whether it's 2D, 3D, or drawing, um, are you demonstrating the skills that go along with it? So if you're doing a 2D portfolio, how well um, of 2D applications are you using? If you're doing a drawing portfolio, how successful are you with drawing applications? So it kind of breaks it down into those three categories, and that's worth 20% of your final score. All right, so now that we um, understand that there's four criteria that College Board looks at for your sustained investigation, I'm going to narrow that down even more. And your actual grading of artwork really only focuses on criteria three and four, okay? Um, your criteria number one about your questions and uh, you know the, the inspiration for your sustained investigation, that's, that's covered in our reflection, okay? And then the criteria number two, where you're demonstrating written and visual evidence of practice, experimentation, revision, that's kind of part of your sketchbooks and, and it's also part of your artwork as well. But for your actual grades of, of your artwork in here every month, it's really just going to be focused on the criteria for three and four. Okay. So here is the um, the guidelines for criteria three and four, specifically from College Board. So when they start grading criteria three and four, this is what they're looking at. This is what they're judging, okay? So for criteria number three, they're looking at your level of imagination, your level of invention. They're looking at your idea and or your concept, okay? And they're looking at levels of it, you know, from, from you know, super successful to mediocre, okay? They're looking for evidence in your artwork that you have experimented and taken risks. It's hard to explain risk taking. That can look a million different ways, but it's definitely something that uh, is easy for me as your evaluator to notice. Um, it's part of you know, knowing you as an artist and as a student um, and working with you uh, for a year or longer and being able to know like how comfortable are you staying uh, with your artwork or are you really you know, trying to go out on a limb and experiment. Experiment can happen in many ways. It could be with your concepts. It could be with your ideas. It could be with, um, you know, the, the thoughts that you're having. Um, how safe are you playing it? Or how, you know, out there are you going? How controversial or personal are you getting? Um, but it can also be risk-taking with materials and processes and and techniques okay so it's really broad it's hard to to explain in one sentence because there's so many variables strength of student voice this is about your style guess what you all have one you just probably don't know it yet you don't recognize it this is part of me getting to know you in the first two months if I don't already know you. Um, this is the one of the first things I tried to harness when getting to know you um, in this class is I'm trying to look for your style. And when I feel like I, I can see it and I can see its strength, then I really push you towards embracing it, okay? Um, for some of you, if I've worked with you quite a bit, 
then you know that I know your style and you have probably felt me already pushing you in that direction. For some of you that maybe I haven't worked with yet, um, you know, I'm still learning and I'm still getting a feel for what your style is. Um, style is noticeable, especially in a sustained investigation. When you are completing a body of artwork that's all related, um, student voice and style needs to be strong and present. If your body of artwork seems like, you know, that you don't have a style or you don't have, you know, a certain flair or technique or your artwork just seems really disjointed and like they don't relate and kind of like they don't all come from the same mother or father, okay? And, and that's really important for this body of work. So the strength of your voice is something that they will assess. Um, they will also assess how confident your artwork feels and looks to the viewer. Um, how evocative is it? Evocative means, you know, like how interesting or how much does it like reel in the viewer? How engaging is it? Um, you know, are you making artwork that, that causes the viewer to pause and stare at it a little bit and wonder um, or feel something very strong? Or are you making artwork that literally comes across as like blah, boring, I've seen that before, that's nothing new, I'm not impressed. Um, so, you know, College Board will definitely assess, you know, that, that vibe that it's giving to the audience, okay? And then the last criteria for um, number three is just kind of your overall quality and accomplishment. So it's just kind of, you know, overall in terms of concept, in terms of execution, you know, what, what is the quality of the final product, okay? Then for criteria four, okay, this is about your specific portfolio. If you're a 2D person, drawing person, 3D person. With that in mind, they're going to ask, how well are you using the elements and principles in your category? So that's a big reason why on, in October I wanted you to focus on elements and principles. It's one of the grading criteria. And so they want to know that you are using those parts of art, those elements and principles of art, to your advantage for your portfolio um, style. Okay. They want to see how good your compositional design is. Composition applies to every piece of artwork, every medium. It doesn't matter 2D or 3D, okay? Composition exists, and they want to know how well are you dealing with it. Okay? They want to know about activation of negative space. That is more specific for those 3D people. Um, if you are working three-dimensionally, they want to know how well your three-dimensional objects are interacting with negative space, okay? They're definitely going to look at your technical competence. So if you're choosing to work with charcoal or you're choosing to work with clay or you're choosing to work with wood or whatever your medium is and whatever your technique is, how well do you do it? How good are you at it? Okay, so your technical competence is going to be judged. The skills with your materials are going to be judged and your overall craftsmanship, okay? You might be really great at drawing, but maybe you're horrible at taking care of your artwork. And at the end of the day, you've got smudges on it. It's wrinkled, it's folded, it's torn. Okay, craftsmanship matters. That end display um, and, and kind of that end reveal of your art pieces matter a lot. So you're going to definitely be judged on those things. Okay, so now let's start to transition to how do we take all this, this college board grading criteria and apply it to the classroom and my art pieces when Ms. Michael, Michaels grades it, okay? So this is the rubric, you know, the, the grading scale that um, I have kind of translated for you, all right? Your artwork, 
let me back up, your portfolio, each section is graded on a six point scale, six, five, four, three, two, one, okay? Six represents excellent, five represents strong, four represents good, then moderate, then weak, then poor, okay? Those are college board's words, all right? Each section is graded on this scale. So your sustained investigation and then your quality section graded on the scale. Then when those two sections are averaged together, okay, to make your composite score, that's then graded on a five point scale. And I know that that's confusing, but it is, that's how it works. So when you get your um, final score this summer, you will, it will be from one to five, all right? Five being the best, okay? So I know that that's confusing, um, but that's how it's broken down. Since this is how they grade your sustained investigation, this is how I grade your sustained investigation, okay? On the six point scale. If you notice, each section is divided into two parts. So if you um, are receiving an excellent six, there's two criterias to it. And I've linked it to the criteria that we just reviewed. The top part is uh, referencing criteria number four, okay, those elements, those principles, the composition, technical quality. And the bottom part is um, representative of criteria three, your idea, your concept, experimentation, risk, etc. okay? So that is broken down for each one of these scores. So a score of five, same thing, broken down into the two criteria and all the way through, okay? So that's how this grid is, um, how you read it and that's how this grid relates to college board and college board criteria now here's the frustrating part we have to then translate this to mount vernon township high school and how skyward works and how our grades and our grading scale works here so yes it's very frustrating okay in Skyward, I cannot make your art projects worth six points, okay? Mathematically, that would not do you well at all. It would hurt you, it would damage you mathematically. So I had to translate the six points into 100 points. So all of your artworks are worth 100 points, okay? But when you translate it to the AP score and to the letter grade, this is kind of the chart that we use, okay? So if you got an AP score of six, that is an A plus 100%, okay? If you got an AP score of 5.75 or 5.5, that is a letter grade of A, um, and if you're 5.75, this is your percentage. 5.5, this is your percentage. Um, if you got a 5.25, you're an A minus, this is your percentage, okay? So in Skyward, your percentage in this right column is what is entered. Now, I need you to take note. AP does not give points. AP will never give you a 5.5 or a 4.25. It doesn't exist, okay? You will either get a 6, a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, 1, okay? Um, I break it down a little bit further for you in the grading process here at school, okay? I want you to know how close you are to a 5 or how close you are to the 4, okay? I want you to know that criteria. So we have a little bit further breakdown here. But this is how you read your grades here at MVTHS and how it relates to College Board. Um, these are um, kind of the scoring guidelines specifically for each grade, okay? I'm not going to go through 
all of them for you because they are located not only in the screencast, but they are on your grade sheet, okay? And what I need you to take notice of without going through each one is the difference is very, very subtle, okay? The good news is that I am very comfortable at distinguishing those subtle differences. So I just want to give you an example. To receive a six, okay, um, your elements and principles need to be highly successful. Do you understand that? So the word that's in red is how it's how College Board gauges you, okay? So for um, your elements and principles, let's just focus on that. A score of six says that they're highly successful, all right? Now, let's look at what happens for a score of five. A score of five just says successful use of elements and principles, okay? See that difference? Six, highly successful, five successful, four decent, three they're very narrow in scope, two they are weak, and one they are hardly noticed or considered. Okay. So that's the range of grading for all of those criteria and again at this point this is where just kind of um, my training and my certification uh, comes into play and that, um, you know, you, you're just going to have to trust that in terms of college board that I do understand where your artwork falls at any given point in time um, and that, you know, that's part of my guiding you um, through this process. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, turning in your monthly artwork. You already know how to do that. You have to give photographs um, in Google Classroom. You have to do your reflection questions. Um, but here's something else that needs to happen that, that didn't happen for September is, guys, you need to document the progress of your work from here on out. Um, so with your October pieces, I want you to start photographing it in stages. If you can do three stages, that's pretty good. The last stage, of course, will be the finished piece of artwork. So maybe you're going to photograph it, um, you know, in its first couple of days. Maybe you're going to photograph it midway through and then photograph it again at its final completed stage. This is, again, documenting a journey. Because in that journey, we can see that you are making um, decisions with your artwork to you know, help improve it, that you are rendering and refining it, that you are enhancing the quality of it, or that you are making changes to it based on you know, whether or not it's, it's working conceptually. Um, we are not able to prove to College Board that we are having those kinds of um, experiences with, you know, watching how our artwork develops if we don't take pictures of it. All right. So that is now going to be a requirement for your um, images that you upload into Google Classroom every month. Your artwork um, can't just be a final um picture that you're going to have to show me some progress photos as well okay it's also really important that you keep all of these things in one google folder because i'm telling you come uh april when we're trying to put our portfolio together digitally you're going to want all of those images for the whole entire year to be located in one spot you're not going to want to have to search through your phone. You're not going to want to have to search through my cameras. Um, you're not going to want to have to search through your entire drive. Make your life easier. Make a folder on your Google Drive right now that just says AP, um, you know, artwork images, and stick them all in that folder. Okay, be very organized and diligent. You, you will thank me later. 
you already know what the reflection questions look like. You've already experienced them, so we don't need to go through that. Um, but what I do want to talk to you about now is on Monday and Tuesday, or, uh, next week, you're going to be receiving your first grade sheets for your artwork, okay? And um, I want to tell you, you know, now that we've been educated, I'm going to make this bigger for you. Now that you've been educated on grading, when I get my grade sheet back, you know, what do I do? How do I look at it? And how do I make it work for me? Okay. So this will come back to you. You will have two of them, one for each artwork. At the bottom, I will um, kind of write down for which art piece. I usually label it September artwork number one, September artwork number two. Um, and then you will see highlights. Okay. I highlight every criteria um, and where it landed all right so you're not your artwork is not all going to fall in one grade because maybe you really rocked out your elements and principles but maybe your technical skills have a lot of work that needs to be done and so they're going to fall in different ranges so for every single criteria that we just went over I highlight where you fall, okay? So you're gonna look at all your highlights and you're gonna definitely wanna know which ones you're doing well with. But you're gonna wanna pay attention to the ones that are down here because that means that's what you need to improve on. That's what you need to fix. That's what the problem is. So for example, this one says, the student voice is unrecognizable in criteria two, which means weak. That's saying, hey, student, your style is not showing. Your personal, um, you know, your personal style and your personal technique, it's not strong. You need to work on that. We need to work on harnessing that more and figuring out what your style is and embracing it, okay? Um, so you're going to want to pay attention to these lower criteria, and you're going to want to get them moved up. OK, so for your next artwork, that's kind of where you're going to focus and try to get them more up in, the, you know, four, five, six range. OK, um, what I do then is I look at all of the highlighted areas and I average them out. All right. And then that's what becomes your score down here. So down here, it says three point five. So when I averaged out all of your highlights, it came to 3.5. And then I translated that to the, you know, Mount Vernon grade scale and, um, you know, what percentage that would be. And that's a 76.49% letter grade of C. Okay. So that is how you will analyze your grade. You know, I don't give this back to you and you look at your grade and be like, okay, that's what I got. I give this back to you so you can analyze it and say, okay, wow, there are some things I need to focus on, some things I really need to improve on so that I can get my scores up here. And that's the goal. By February, by March, all of your highlights should be moving up the scale because you're getting better at it, you're getting more familiar, your artwork's getting stronger, and we should be able to see those highlights moving. So again, grading in here is a tool, a tool for you to use to be successful. Um, I want you, you know, to be able to understand your grades, not just accept them and make them work for you. And, you know, together, it, by, you know, being on the same page with grading, and really understanding it, I promise you that you're going to be um, very successful when College Board gets your portfolio and starts to grade it. And that is the whole goal here. That is the point. So hopefully this made sense. Um, hopefully uh, you have a better understanding of your grades in here and you know at any point if you have a question or you are unsure of something that you can ask me. So take care and I will see you soon.